Hi, and welcome to Hack an Instant. Today, I'm going to answer the question, what can you do with an old Polaroid camera? My journey with Polaroid started around 40 years ago when I was in a thrift store. Back then, Polaroid cameras were getting to be 20 years old, so I picked one up for the total price of $1. Now, that was the cheap part of the camera. It needed a battery, and that cost $5. And it needed film which cost $8 and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to spend $8. You might think that's cheap, but then minimum wage was only $3 an hour. So how many hours of work would it take to pay for a pack of film? You figure that one out. But I did jump and take the leap and bought a pack of film. And I was hooked. After the first picture, you pull out the tab, you pull out the second tab and you wait one minute and then you peel apart and there was the photo. It was just magical. And pack film has, is magical. So that set me on the, the course of collecting. I tried to collect almost all the Polaroid cameras, the pack cameras that had bellows. And it was just right until about 2008, when before that Polaroid had declared bankruptcy, but they were still making film. But the company that took them over decided, we don't want to make any more film. And that was a shock. So that was the first kind of wake up call. Fuji was still making film and they would make film for the next eight years until 2016 and they pulled the plug. When that happened, I knew that all my cameras would become film orphans. And that was not a nice thought because I had about 30 cameras. So I was, what I first did was I bought a bunch of film and I had my own stash. And so I kind of uh, worked my way through the stash over the next couple years and, and kind of, you know, wait, should I take this picture? Should I not? But I knew my film was running out and by 2020, it had almost run out. In fact, this is my last picture right here. Once I take this picture and pull that tab, all my film is gone. And I don't know what I'm going to take that picture of. If you have any suggestions, write them in the comments below. So after a, f a couple of years of bemoaning my state of orphan cameras, um, back in 2020, when things were locking down, I had a little bit of extra time on my hands. And I was thinking, pack film is not coming back. One instant is back, but it's just kind of a, um, a last ditch effort to revive old film and it was kind of expensive and no one else was taking up the mantle to produce pack film. It's just too complicated, too difficult. So I was, I made a decision to do what it takes to make these cameras work again. And the obvious choice, uh, starting out was converting it to Instax. So here's the first camera I did. And this is the first thing that you can do to it. Um, a Polaroid camera. This conversion, this particular conversion was pretty brutal. I had to cut the frame of the camera and I had to mount it upside down, which apparently Instax users don't like cameras uh, with uh, backs that are mounted upside down. For some odd reason, they're kind of allergic to that sort of thing. I don't mind it at all because it makes for quite a compact camera. But this conversion required a lot of cutting, a lot of finagling. There's a, there's a special bracket I had to put on here in order for um, the film offset to be correct. And, but it works. And this is still, I still use this camera quite a bit to do snapshots because it will take all the accessories. So it'll take, it'll take the old flash cube, um, flash cube holder, and it will take even the close-up attachment, which is kind of cool. This way you can take portraits and close-ups of people. And um, so it's, it's totally usable and it produces Instax photos. Now, if you've never used an Instax photo, um, there's a lot of differences between Instax and Polaroid, but at least I had instant photos. Now, um, the next conversion I did was to SX70. This is another project which was quite difficult and it took a lot of um, 
a lot of engineering, especially with the Polaroid back. What I had to do is I had to get a Polaroid SX70 and this one wasn't working. And I know they're worth a lot of money and I know that they're probably worth fixing, but I thought it might be worth making an SX70 Polaroid pack camera. And so I managed to modify the SX70 camera and put a little switch in backwards so that it wouldn't fire out all the film and then I had to wire it. It's pretty complicated. Um, but this thing actually produces SX70 photos. One of the, one of the things that you, um, the disadvantages of, a, of it is that it will reverse the image. So you always get reverse photos with this thing, which is okay. And I am not really excited about SX70 film because um, it just is not the same as the original Polaroid film. It does work though, and it is fun using it. But this camera hack was quite, quite involved, especially getting this prepared. But that's my second camera that I, that I did. Now, what else can you do with, an, with a um, Polaroid camera? This is my other Instax. For those of you who really want Instax to eject from the top and the, and the photos with the, with the big bar on the bottom, this is the camera. Now, unfortunately, it's quite a bit bigger and I had to print up a different case. I had to use a 3D printer to do this one because the rangefinder had to come up higher, the back had to go on a little bit farther back, and then the lens body has to move back. So this is a pretty fairly involved conversion, but it doesn't require any cutting or anything. So that's what makes this one really nice. So we have two Instax cameras. We have an SX70 camera. What else can we do with these things? My next project, was just simply making one of these cameras take negatives. And I started off with paper negatives. Um, just basically what I would do is I would have all my negatives in this little box and then I would just load up one of these old film holders. This is old pack film with a paper negative and in a dark bag, I would load it into the camera and close the door and then I would take the picture. Now, because paper negatives have only have a ISO of like three, uh, you had to have it on a tripod. And I had a little um, piece of tape over here so that I can time long exposures. But um, this is another thing you can do with Polaroid cameras is convert them to manual shutter speed. So this is, that was my next project. I was trying to figure out how I can make a Polaroid camera um, with manual shutter speeds, like a half a second or maybe a quarter second or whatever else in between, an eighth of a second, so that I can use regular negatives or I can just, or I can use different aperture settings with the Polaroid. And so that was a project where I had to go digging inside uh, the shutter and I, I found out it wasn't really that hard to do. It was basically just hooking a couple of wires up to where the photo cell was and then running them back to a resistor array which is in the camera here and the resistor array just selects between different shutter speeds by um, by tapping it through the right resistance for the right shutter speed that made these cameras so much more useful because all these cameras are automatic automatic exposure and now that i have manual shutter control i can do a lot of different other things that set me onto my next project and that was um, roll film. So I'm not sure where I came up with this idea, but I saw some other, some other projects where roll, people put roll film backs on the back and it made it really big and clunky and I really didn't like those. So I thought, does a roll film, um, a roll film holder sit in the camera? And it does. I found out it does if you remove the guts of the back all the rollers and everything, and, and you have to cut into the back a little bit. But this is designed with a 3D printer, and it's basically the same size as a cartridge, and it will take a picture and you just advance it just like a regular old 120 camera. This one's six by six. So this will take the square pictures, 
And the only modification that I needed to do was, of course, remove the guts off the back and file a little bit of hole in the side. Now, um, that was six by six. And somebody said, well, can you do six by nine? I'm going six by nine. That, I don't know if you can, because is there space in there? Well, this one, there is space in there. I managed to design a cartridge um, that is quite a bit more complex. The film takes a little bit more of a crazy turn to it, um, and there's a little bit extra friction to it, but it is six by nine. And it works by, by, um, by the film taking quite a convoluted path uh, and, um, and the rolls being on the inside. But it can do six by nine. And, I, and I've taken some pictures with this and, and I'm surprised as how good the glass lens is and on these cameras. These have three element glass lenses and they're very good. They're very sharp. On all these cameras, the reason why I thought I could do this was because um, I've discovered how to do manual shutter control. And so these cameras have the capability of doing bulb or just open shutter right up to one thousandth of a second. And so that's quite capable. You can, you can use this with whatever high speed film uh, that you have. And it has um, six apertures, six different apertures that you can use. So after doing roll films, the next camera that I decided to try and work on is whether a Polaroid can do 4x5. Can't, does it cover 4x5? So I set to work trying to figure out, this is one of my more difficult projects. I set to work trying to figure out whether the lens actually covered it and it looked like it did. It looked like it did sort of. So I made a back for it, 4x5 back. It moves the focal plane back a little bit so that it'll enlarge the image to this, the 4x5 area. And because of that, I had to also move the shutter body back as well. And including that, I also had designed a film holder. This was the most crucial aspect of this. So this is all being 3D printed and designed. And it'll hold a standard three, uh, four by five sheet of paper or lift film or, or whatever film it is. And it seems to be pretty light tight. That's what, um, especially when using these kind of um, plastic um, film covers. They're a little bit tricky to use because you can't pull them all the way out. Otherwise, you'll never get them all the way back in. But they do work. And so you just load the 4x5 holder in. I have a strap that I put over it. You pull the dark slide, take the picture, and then put the dark slide back in. Then 4x5 doesn't work completely because there is a little bit of vignetting on the corners, but I think that kind of adds a little bit of character to the photos. The next thing that I did was to figure out a way that I can make manual shutter control in a module that you can just clip on and put on, put on whichever camera you want manual shutter control with, and then you just plug it in to the shutter body and it turns it from an automatic camera to a manual. That's what I really wanted, something super easy to use, something I can just transfer to any camera so I don't have to modify the camera. The only modification has to be just in the shutter body. And that was one of my, uh, was my, one of my most fun projects because then I can make this dongle, I call it a, a manual shutter speed dongle, for any of the cameras. And this only cost about $10 to produce, so it's really cheap to do. Um, all of these modifications and instructions are on my website, which is in my profile if you want to check it out. Now, a couple of other ad hoc cameras, and I'm not sure um, where these are going, but when I was in another thrift store, I picked up this 2.2x um, telephoto lens. And it's a really cheap lens. Okay, it has Polaroid's name on it, but I don't think it's really Polaroid quality. Um, so I made an adapter for it and put a 4x5 back on this and this is my what will end up being my portrait camera. So I will take a 4x5 film holder and I can load it into the back of the 4x5 um, back 
and I just put an M3 flash bulb in here, focus about five feet away, and boom, this will take RA4 or color pictures. This is one of my more exciting cameras because this will allow me to take actually color instant pictures. What it is, what I do is I use uh, color paper and I use the RA4 reversal pro uh, process, which means you develop the film in black and white and then you turn on the lights, you develop it in color chemistry and the color picture appears. If you wanna see any of this demonstrated, go to my Instagram profile, which is in my profile here and check out the videos I've done there, just the short videos I've done there on that. This is a neat camera and it, go, it gets closest to the Polaroid experience because it produces a print that feels like a print and not the plastic envelope with the, the clear acetate on the outside. It produces a real print and that's what's so neat about this. And the last camera I modified is this real quirky thing. I don't use it very much. I just wondered whether it could be done, but I found this Tomimon lens, which is the um, lens that's on the Polaroid 180, which is a really nice camera. It's a manual camera, but it only has a single shutter speed, but I got it, I picked it up pretty cheap. And I had this old camera sitting around um, with, it was gutted because of another modification I did to another camera. <laughs> and so I, I just put that, that lens inside this and it's just a, a, ve a very, very nice lens. But I use it with film holders, Polaroid size film holders. And these film holders um, are this big. They're a little bit smaller than the 4x5 film holders. Um, they're the same size as a Polaroid picture. And that's what makes them kind of neat. So you just kind of stick them in, you close the back, Oops, take them in, close it back, and then you can pull the dark slide and take the picture and put the dark slide back in. This takes just whatever film you want, but because this is a high speed um, shutter, it will take normally take um, high speed film. So because the shutter doesn't um, go do anything different than 1 25th. So there you have it. That's what I've done with these cameras, and that's what can be done with the cameras. If you have any questions or, or um, uh, would like more information on it go to my website and that has a lot of detail on how to do this sort of thing and it even has the 3d 3d files for printing up all these things if you have a, access to a library you can print up the cartridges for roll film or you can print up the templates for doing the instax conversion and or um what else the the little box for the dongle all that's on there so what I've found here is that Polaroid cameras are very, very capable. They can do all sorts of things. They can do real film, instant film. They can do sheet film. And so um, I've, it's just so fun to have these cameras revived and to be able to use them again and to take pretty good pictures with them. So that's the answer. What can you do with a Polaroid camera? A lot.